Hi everybody, it's Kira with Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to share my Mermaid's Treasure Bowl. This bowl is a set of three that is going out to my swap partners in Polymer Clay Adventure. And it's also part of an art challenge at Polymer Clay Tribe this month. So come on in and join us. Let's get started. First, we need to cover our little bowl on the outside with clay. So I've rolled out my clay to a number four, which is fairly thin. And since I'm going to have so many layers, I'm okay with that. So you just want to smooth your clay down onto your form. And try to make contact with the metal or glass. You can use a glass bowl too if you wanted to. And smooth it on there, make sure it gets stuck. And once you've got it stuck down, we'll just use an X-Acto knife to cut off the excess. Now I want the outside of this bowl to be covered with my fish scales. So I've got a fish scale cane and you can use any cane that you want. I happen to make this for another tutorial in Polymer Clay Universe magazine and now I have a lot of fish scale cane that I'd like to use up. So what I'm doing here is cutting the slices and cutting them in half so that I can create a fish scale pattern. So you will want to cut some slices from your cane and if you're going to do a fish scale or a flower petaling kind of a pattern then you'll just want to make sure that they're all about the same thickness and then just cut them in half. So go ahead and do that and get a nice big pile of them. You can do this project with flower petal canes or leaf canes or jelly roll canes, any kind of cane you want. So because I'm going for this mermaid feeling, that's why I'm using my fish scale cane. And what I'm going to do now that all my pieces are flattened and cut in half is I'm going to start on the edge and just go around and I'm just going to overlap slightly. as I go around the uh, edge. And this is gonna take a little while, so I'm not gonna film the whole thing, but you get the idea. I'm gonna do the first row here so that you can see where I'm headed, and then you can continue on your own. So when you come to this part, you've got to decide what you're going to do. You can overlap this side and then slightly lift the first one you laid down, which is why I don't press very hard at this point, because you may need to adjust when you come around this first, the first course here. And then once you know that everything is where you want it, you can press them down a little firmer, more firmly. And then we're just going to start on the next row. And as I put these down, I'm more or less looking for the better side so that when they show, we'll see the nice looking side. And I'm going to put it like a scale would be where the middle of the scale is overlapping where the other two next to it come together. Now 
more or less. It depends on how big your um, pieces of clay are, you know. you. I don't want this to be super, super thick. And I'm also not really into making myself crazy with precision. So I'm going to do my best to stagger these, but I'm also not going to be crazy about where they end up. So I want it to look nice, but I don't want to drive myself nuts. Now, if you want it to look very realistic, like a fish, um, I mean, don't you don't have to go super fast. You don't have to ignore precision. It's just more my style to let things be organic and not have straight, super straight lines and lots of precision. I just think, to me, I like it to look... A little more natural than that but like I said that is up to you and again I'm coming to the end of a row and I'm going to pick one that's a little bit smaller and I'm going to lift this one up and slide this one under so that you can't really tell where my row I've reached the middle and here's how I want to handle this. I have taken a really large down here. This was a large one that I had and I am I cut it into four pieces. So I cut it like a plus sign so that I could get into the middle here with these small pieces and just kind of overlap them. And then I'm going to take a piece of scrap that has gold. It's got some gold leaf in it. It's basically translucent clay with a little gold leaf and I'm going to make a little circle for the center. Just like that. And then I'm going to gently press down all my scales because I don't want this to be very like sticking out. I just want it to be pressed down and touching each other. And now we're going to go in for the first baking and that is going to be because this is all primo it's going to be 275 for 30 minutes. My baked bowl is out of the oven and we're just going to pry it off of the bowl comes off fairly easily. You might have to stick your fingernail underneath, but it should pop right off. And now I like the idea of having something surprising on the inside. So I've got some Primo. I think this color is Periwinkle. And I've rolled a piece to a number three on my machine, which is a medium thick, and then another piece. And I'm going to add some pink foil. So this is the mylar backed foil and you're just going to put it down on your clay and burnish it, get all the air bubbles out. The cards that come with our silk screens are a good thing to use for this. And then once it's burnished on there you're going to Rip that mylar off like a band-aid and now it's on the clay. So one of the fun things about this is that when you bend it, it crackles slightly. And I'm going to run this through my pasta machine to thin it out a little bit more. And get even more of that sort of fine crackle and then on here I think I just want to do a sort of stripe maybe I'll do it with a little I don't know I'm thinking that if I could come out from the center sort of with a point I could make a radiating design but I'm not going to be too concerned because whatever I do here, I'm going to stretch when I put it back through my pasta machine to blend these 
together. I don't want it to be um, lumpy on the inside of the bowl. So in case you aren't a member of Polymer Clay Tribe, while I'm finishing this, I'll tell you about what's going on there. It's our Facebook group, and this month we are having a little challenge, and the challenge is Mermaid's Treasures. And this bowl is actually part of a swap in Polymer Clay Adventure. So three people in Polymer Clay Adventure are going to get a mermaid's treasure bowl from me. Don't know who you're going to be, but I do know that I'll be sending them in to swap with some other people who are in Polymer Clay Adventure. So that'll be fun. That's It's always fun to do swaps. Okay, now this is going to go into my pasta machine until it's flat and a little bit thinner. This is one time through in this direction just to flatten it a bit and then I'm going to go this way as well. So this is two more times through and now I feel like it's good and flat and I can come back to my little bowl here and I'm just going to find the center and I'm going to put it inside the bowl press it down and then we're going to smooth it to fit the interior of my bowl. And because the whole thing is polymer clay, you don't have to put any binders or anything in there. When I bake, bake this again, it's just all going to stick and be, become permanent. So just be patient and gentle and smooth it to the outside so that you don't have any air bubbles and so that it's firmly pressed up against the inside of your bowl. If you have a stubborn air bubble, you can always pop it out. Just press the air towards it and then close it up with your finger. And now I'm going to carefully cut this around the top here. Set that aside because you know you can always use your scraps for something else. And now that I've got all that extra off, I'm just going to take a look at what I've got here. Make sure that it's pressed up. And making contact and even coming over and going between these scales that are on the top here. Because there is a, a uh, gap between the scales on the outside and then the green of the bowl. So I want to kind of fill that and if I have excess clay I can cut it off. But this is finishing time so take your time and make it finished how you want it to look. And right now I'm just checking to make sure that I'm pressed 
up against the clay on the inside and that I don't feel any air inside there because that will get trapped and kind of make a little balloon when it when air gets hot it expands and it'll make like a defect on the inside of your bowl if you don't get it out now and now since I have some of this left I'm feeling like I'd like to go around the top of the bowl with it just a couple of thin pieces just to emphasize the pink because I really like that color. So this is going to go back in my oven for another 30 minutes to make sure that all of the clay is baked. And I think one last thing I'm going to take my shell stamper and just make a pattern up here so that it doesn't look unfinished. You always want to think about how it's going to look when it's all done. Is it going to look finished? Is it going to look like it still needs something? And before you bake it is the time to have that discussion with yourself. I'll be back when it's baked. I just wanted to show you how cool the scale pattern looks. The way the scales are created, it looks like there are actual swirls inside of them and it's metallic gold leaf that's giving that effect. And then we've got the interior of the bowl with the iridescent pink. I hope you enjoyed this project. There are so many ways to make a little bowl and it's hard to even get into all of them, but this is one of the simple ways by putting a pattern on the outside and something smooth on the inside. And that way you can put little rings or pills or change or hair things in there. I have little bowls around for all of those things. And uh, I put my vitamins in them in the morning and they're just fun to have around. So I hope that you will join us over at createalong.com and the Polymer Clay Tribe. We'll see you next week.